So my last one, I would like to just throw out one more topic. Now, there are so many. So for an example, we could start off with, um, you know, here, here's a study talking about, you know, uh, as climate change gets worse and there's more severe weather events, you know, there's a greater risk of motor vehicle accidents. And so there's so many angles we could take. But like I said, I'd, I'd like to just kind of pick one more. The reason I'd like to pick this one is I um, remember a year ago there was someone who made the following comment. They were like, oh, you know, while, you know, people like me, they're, they're concerned about, you know, terrorism. You know, those people over there, they're talking about climate change. That's so ridiculous. Like, terrorism is, is such a threat. Now, here also you get, you know, the idea here. And I, I take issue with this for two reasons. One, where it says Obama is right. First off, as a scientist asking a question about the natural world, you know, about climate change, et cetera, um, I honestly don't care whose name you would put there. Once again, nothing is true because I say it. Just because your teacher says something, you should doubt everything, all right? And I would apply that then to anybody. So whether I had, you know, confidence in a conclusion or not, it isn't because someone said it. It's because what the evidence, you know, predicts. And, and so this is framing a, a scientific question about the natural world. Are we seeing something in a political sense? But as scientists and as, you know, science students, we don't have to see it that way. You know, it's a, it's a simple scientific question. And then here's it. It's right. Aha! I'm right. You're wrong. Once again, that's not the way we're approaching this. You know, your comment earlier, here in the website, look, we have high confidence in this medium confidence in this, some confidence in this. So the data suggests this. If new data suggests something different tomorrow, um, I will hold a different conclusion tomorrow. Our conclusions are what the data suggests, regardless of who says it. And it's certainly not a political game of right or wrong. Um, but terrorism should be mentioned. All right. And once again, I'd just like to read a couple of uh, statements. Um, and so. Uh, does weather, does climate change, does the instance of severe weather, does changing weather patterns and drought, does that have any relevance with climate change or with terrorism? Just read something. Iraq was also severely affected by drought. Between 2007 and 2009, livestock numbers plummeted. Between 2008 and 2009, crop yields declined more than 40 percent, um, and production dropped 45 percent from average uh, harvest. In response to this, up to 100,000 farmers, many of those you know, from areas around the Euphrates, abandoned their fields and migrated to urban centers. All right. Now, I'd like to read a little bit from the next page. In the years 2007 to 2008, the agricultural season, this is in Syria, um, uh, dropped from 47 and 67 percent, respectively, compared to previous years. Um, many herders lost over 80 percent of their livestock. For the first time in 15 years, Syria had to uh, import large quantities of wheat. So when we ask questions, even something uh, you know, as subjective as perhaps terrorism, there's data. I mean, you can look in certain years, look, rainfall went down, all right? Crop harvest went down as a result compared um, to average, all right? You can measure this. And, and so once again, um, you, if you want to make an informed decision, there are studies. People measure how uh, extreme weather events are affecting drought and harvest, et cetera. All right, so the last image was from Syria. This is from Iraq. And we can measure climate is changing. Does that have any effect? All right, well, this is, you know, if we're going to link climate to human behavior, that's difficult. But once again, publications will say, all right, if we look at events where there was some sort of a political unrest, you know, and there's a diversity here, were there any environmental problems which preceded that? All right, well, whether it goes from Bangladesh to Ethiopia, Rwanda, Mexico, you know, there's a whole the host on the next couple that I'm going to show you. But prior to some of the conflicts that uh, they uh, report, um, there was drought, there was famine, there was water scarcity, there was drought, et cetera. And that's an issue in these cases, in these cases, in these cases. And so one could ask, you know, just from a data standpoint, does climate change seem to precede um, more political unrest? And then, but just, this is not data-driven, right? but just a, a question to you. If 
there was going to be political unrest. In which of these two groups do you think it is the greatest threat? In which of the two groups here do you think it is? In which of the two groups here? All right, and, and when um, individuals are harvesting, making plans for the future, you know, I think it is likely to predict there would be a lower chance of political unrest, of a terrorist act that would attempt to undermine the system if the system is working for you, if I'm invested in it. However, if the system is failing, if there's no food, if I don't know where I'm going to live, then I think these are the circumstances which would then foster more unrest. And so once again, I would like to take you know, an issue. We don't have to say you know, right, wrong, it's this or it's that. Um, but certainly climate change seems to be a factor which contributes to the conditions under which uh, terrorism thrives.